Good morning and afternoon. It's Wednesday, 9 a.m. Pacific. Welcome all. I'm Kane and I'm joined with David, better known as the Workday Sharing Guy. Also joining us is Denise, Logan and special guests. Welcome to the Sharing Show. Thanks so much, Kane. Can you tell us a little bit more about Zoom? Certainly. Um, all our lines are open for chat, so everyone can go on to the chat. Just make sure that you change the setting so that your message gets through to everybody. I think it's all attendees on there. Um, also, remember, we're in our summer schedule, so the next show will be on 28th of August, which is uh, the last Wednesday of this month, uh, of, of August month, sorry. And now we are ready to pass over to our first Kahoot. Over to you guys. Thanks, Kane. Um, let's go ahead and do our uh, first Kahoot this morning, our su survey Kahoot. If you will open a browser and go to Kahoot.it. And there might be some people new here. Um, so Kahoot.it, you can do it on the phone, you can do it on the browser. Just make sure the URL is Kahoot.it. Denise, it's asking me for a pin. Okay, we'll get your pin here in just a moment. Okay, the pin for this survey is 781414. So again, it's 781414. Yeah, 781414. And for those who are brand new, you could do it on your phone. Open the tab in your browser, just type in kahoot.it. And there's no correct answers on this one. This one's just a survey. We got a full show today, so um, I think we should just go ahead and get going here. Okay, there's only two questions this morning, so here we go. Will you attend pre-rising share -thon? Okay, red is I will attend and have registered. Blue is I will attend and have not registered. Yellow is I don't yet have approval. And green is I won't be able to attend. And that picture, by the way, you see Denise and myself here, uh, we gave away an Apple Watch. We have more prizes giving away uh, this year. Of course, we got our tie-dye t-shirts. Um, what are we looking at? Um, a little, about half, a little bit under half aren't able to attend. Uh, otherwise, the winner here is a lot of people have already registered. And if you haven't registered, it is um, a link out on community to do that. Uh, what is your favorite swag to receive from vendors at Rising? A red is stuffed animals, blue is water bottles, yellow is coffee gift cards, and green are clean socks. Coffee gift cards. I think those were a big hit last year too. So that was my pick. Really clear. Okay. Next, we're gonna um, get our disclaimer from David, the workday sharing guy. All right. Hi, everybody. This is David. Um, this is a quick disclaimer. I don't work for Workday anymore. I used to. I was employee 149. I've been doing Workday for almost 12 years now. My views here are just my views. Everybody who's on here. Um, Workday customers, we're all sharing with each other. This is not training, it's knowledge sharing. Um, I highly recommend the Workday training for those who are interested in training. Now, a slightly different disclaimer this time. Um, let's see here. I've added to the disclaimer that um, make sure everybody knows that I'm not long on blah futures. And for those who were um, in last month's um, or have seen last month's, you know that in my European Sherathon Marathon, I went to Amsterdam and I drank a lot of law. And so this is in a way a, a photo. One of the photos for this month is um, on, a, on an airplane flight. People were wondering what I was doing flying London to Amsterdam. And I explained that I'm going for the law. Well, this fantastic airline that starts with a K and ends in an M and has an L in the middle um, handed me, they said they don't have law, but this is the best they could do. And they handed me something um, and there's, of course, um, Parky um, enjoying um, a VLA substitute on that flight. Um, anyway, I'm not plugging VLA. 
um, other than it was something that was significant to me. I'm also, um, um, you know, disclaimer, I, I don't work for Movember. I'm what Movember calls a, an ambassador. So I'm a captain of a Movember team. And also on the final day of the month, which happens to be today, um, I shave half of a mustache and then I start over the next month. And so there's some pictures here from a year ago, but just to prove that I have talking to you right now with half of a mustache, I have a picture in the upper right of today's workday stock so that you can see that that is my um, face today. Um, I, I recruit people to my Movember team. Um, there'll be more about Movember and charity in upcoming shows. We've got a full, um, full agenda today, so let's move forward. What do we have next on the agenda? Up next, we have Andre from the UK with our fun photos of the month. Hey, so uh, for those of you who are at Workday Rising in Europe uh, last year, you may have remembered this, this presentation during one of the keynote, keynotes where Joe Kongeibel um, was extolling the virtues of Godiva and Swarovski uh, and handed out some chocolates. Um, I have the pleasure of working for Godiva and while on the flight out to Las Vegas, I happened to see that the person sitting two seats over had a Workday PowerPoint slide they were working on. So I leant over and, and got chatting and it turned out that she was one of the organizers of Workday Rising Europe. Um, so shortly after I returned home from Las Vegas, I got a note asking if um, I could help to arrange any chocolates for, for Rising Europe to give out um, following the keynote. Sent over some details, heard nothing more about it until the event itself, when a friend of mine who was in the audience suddenly messaged me saying, how, how on earth did you get Godiva uh, up as part of that keynote presentation and thrown out into the audience? Um, so yeah, I was delighted to watch the replay and see that they actually followed through and um, yeah, we saw our, our name in lights. <laughs> okay, Andre, um, thank you for these photos. So that's Joe K uh, sending out, it looks like a lot of chocolates into a crowd at European Rising last year. Um, you also have an ask, um, sorry, we don't have the slide for it, um, but why don't you go ahead and do the audio here for your ask and then sure. people can uh, use the chat to discuss it. Sure. So um, Godiva uh, are a chocolate maker. Uh, we have a number of retail boutiques around the world, I think somewhere around seven or 800 at the moment. So we use Workday Recruiting. Um, and this, is, this ask is specifically around recruiting for retail boutiques. So in order to make it as efficient as possible, and given that we are continuously recruiting, um, and we also have a lot of rehires. So this is often students that come in during their, their vacations. Um, the way that we run it is we use job management as a staffing model. Um, every year we load by EIB um, a requisition for each boutique role with 100 positions, so we don't have to go through the requisition approval each time. Um, the two problems we have that we're trying to find solutions for are the first one is that we do have a big backlog of review candidate tasks, currently around 30,000, um, which, is, which is fine. That's only six or seven for every open role that we have. Um, but what we're finding is, is that the, the store managers won't disposition the, the applicants because if they do, then those candidates could never reapply in the future. Um, so what we're actually looking to, to do is to try and find a way either uh, where we can continuously recruit and have people uh, brought in on the same requisitions time and time again. Um, or if not, if there is any other solution that someone in retail is using that manages rehires uh, in a retail environment. Okay, so for those who would like to discuss that, you could use the chat. And Andre, you can also use the chat to um, repeat the question. Make sure you're chatting to everybody, not just to the panelists, because otherwise just Logan, Denise, myself, and Kane will see it. Okay, I'll just put it in there. That's great. Thank, Thank you, Andre. You so much, Andre. <laughs> 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 we both appreciate you. Let's review uh, last month's asks. Okay, we got four more guests coming. So just very briefly, for those who want to discuss last month's asks on the chat, um, this was manager self-service and employee self-service question that came up from someone in Amsterdam. And also an ask on um, merging candidates. And one reason I'm, I'm showing this, so again, you could watch the, watch the video from last month um, on the YouTube channel. But I'm showing this because in particular, somebody wanted to get the chat messages. So we'll make sure that copy and paste the chat messages to help those who were looking for this. So go ahead and, and feel free to use the chat and we'll copy and paste, we'll make them, make them anon anonymous, 
but we'll put them on the Sharing Show LinkedIn page, which uh, Denise is the owner of. Um, so that's last month's ask. We also have from last month um, a share from Carl. He emailed me this morning and he said, by the way, it's on community. So it's kind of small to see the node there, but it's 55, 64, 45. That's great. Thanks, David. What's next on the agenda? Up next, we have Mike from California with a boomerang. Okay. It's all yours, Mike. All right. Hey, everybody. Thanks. So I'm going to go over some boomerang integrations that we've recently built at my organization. Um, a couple of them were requests, um, and the remaining ones were just some things that I spotted that I thought could be automated. Up on the screen, we have a bunch of details about what each one does, but I'll go into that as we get into the slides. And most importantly, on number six, any ideas that you guys might have after seeing some of these? We have a great boomerang library on community that some of you may know about. And I've already had some examples where I've been able to take some simple boomerangs and give them back to customers that have helped out with process automation. So we'll get into it. Okay, let's go to this first one here. Okay, so this first one is one that takes care of misaligned supervisory organizations. Um, really what that is, is where you have change jobs happening and then maybe you have a move worker happening where that manager relationship gets broken or you have somebody whose organization's over here but they report over there because of a move worker. So what this boomerang does is it goes and queues uh, a report that pretty much dumps out all of the misaligned supervisor organizations. And in that report, there's a calc field that determines what was the last effective date of that move. So really it just goes and gets that information, goes each record and then does a web service request and updates the organization as of that most recent effective date and dumps out a log so that anybody going back can audit it and see what was changed. So this one's a, a similar concept, misaligned locations, and you notice it looks a lot similar. Uh, what it does is it, you have a, somebody who has a primary location on their supervisory org of California, let's say, but they moved to New Jersey. So their primary work location on their worker record is New Jersey, and you want to align that supervisory org so anybody that gets hired in, it gets updated. So what this does is it goes and has a report that identifies um those differences so where does somebody work and their organization's different and it does exactly the same thing it goes and pulls those um organizations finds the right location and then updates the organizations and this one is technically two different ones but in theory it's the same concept so at our organization we have well as you may not know workday doesn't have a service for inactivating or activating um a workday account when someone goes on leave. It, it, there's on the termination business process, but not on the leave or return from leave. So as my software engineering instructor told me, laziness is a virtue and I didn't want to check a box every time someone went on leave. So I just built an integration that goes into each process, uh, one when they go on leave and one when they come back that pretty much disables and enables their account. The, uh, right, the remove user-based security group. So while this is infrequent, or it may be frequent for folks on the phone, but for us, it's pretty infrequent. When someone's um, terminated, we had a to do um, to go in and remove somebody's user-based security uh, groups. So while that's totally fine, um, you know, what if somebody takes, you know, a day to get to that task, right? From an audit perspective, you might get dinged on that. So what this does is it you put this in your termination business process. It pretty much strips all of the user-based security groups out and um, does it for you. And your final boomerang for this airing of the sharing show? So this one is a little bit of a personal one, but folks may have the same ask. Um, we don't have SSO for people to get into Sandbox or for a limited group. and. We had a group that really wanted to use Sandbox every week to test and demo and, and help us out um, to be able to get people used to Workday. So this just pulls a report of who those people are and then goes into Sandbox or just runs and um, resets their password to a default password. And the way you, you can do it is you can deploy this to production, but you set up the schedule feature process so it's restricted to Sandbox. So that way it, you don't, you're not resetting passwords for production. 
Okay, thank you, Mike. I want to talk now about your five boomerangs. And there's another Mike on this call live who was who talked about boomerangs in the very first airing of the sharing show. Um, there's been you know 14 airings so far. This is the 15th. And uh, in case you haven't heard of boomerangs, you pull data out of Workday, you do something with that data, put it back in. Um, so there's a real opportunity here for the functional users to, to be able to almost write these, but reuse them. So there's a boomerang library out there in community. I want to point out some patterns here that I saw in Mike's first two, for example. If you take a look at these first two, this red box is almost the exact same. You know, the titles might be a little bit different, but there's a pattern there, right? Often it's it's grabbing a file or um, like calling these other pieces and, and these other pieces, grabbing a file, grabbing a file means grabbing a report out of Workday or grabbing a web service. So again, this is the first one and this is the second one. And you'll see the pictures are the same, even though they do completely different things. And the bottom is just the error handling. I'll do the same thing with the third and fourth one, right? So take a look at the full picture of the third one. And on the fourth one, you see the picture almost looks the same. It's a little bit different because the, the labels are different there. Um, but the pattern is the same here, except for in this one, um, you know, Mike put, put some uh, deb debugging stuff right in there. So just want to make sure people are aware that boomerangs are, um, you know, things that functional users could request and then with the library, hopefully uh, you don't need to be too technical or you find one technical person to help you with the boomerang. Um, all right, we're gonna move on. We, we still have three more guests um, queued up. Thank you, Mike. What do we have uh, next on the agenda? Well, up next, we have Arvind from India with an ask and a share. Thank you, Denise, Logan, and David. Um, hi, everyone. Right, so this one, the, the share is um, quite a straightforward one. I'm sure, um, you know, a few of you were, would have already done this. But one of the asks that we had was, um, you know, we have, let's say we have presence in, you know, 30 countries and we have multiple entities in each country. And there was a requirement to generate a report on different dates each month for each of these entities. So let's say we have a total of 50 entities and a uh, certain data needs to be sent out um, to a group of people on different dates. So these dates keep changing every month, right? Um, because they, they factor in public holidays for that location. They factor in some other uh, changes that happen. Um, so as a result, it was pretty difficult for us to schedule these reports because there was no fixed date. So one of the things we did was uh, at, at an organization level. So we had a entity organization that we created, right? Uh, we set up a custom table with the dates for the year. So it's not like the dates aren't planned. They're planned, they're pre-planned. It's just, it was sitting outside of work day. So we loaded that in um, at the entity level, the organization level for each of these 50 entities. So it's a one-time task for, you know, uh, we have the dates for the next two years. Uh, but now the uh, point was uh, we wanted to write a single report and basically have it run uh, and send out data to each of the groups uh, separately. Now, we what we did is we set up um, a report group, right? And in a report group, uh, you can have multiple sheets, but you can also burst reports out. What that means is uh, based on an organization and a role and a security group that's assigned to that particular organization, you can push data out automatically to different groups. Now, uh, what, what we did was uh, within the report, we built in a filter. If you see screen two, uh, basically where we said that, um, you know, use, use, run this. So we scheduled it to run every single day, right? So the report runs every day and it, and it checks if the date matches any one of those, um, uh, countries. So for example, every employee is tagged to that uh, one entity, right? So it runs a report against the employee database. Anyone who fits in an entity and matches that particular date, um, uh, only then does a report trigger out. And, and we use the uh, burst feature to make sure that only that group received the report. So we sort of were able to achieve this with one report and one um, sort of a report group set up. Um, and it runs every day, but doesn't mean it fires a report every single day. 
So that um, that's what we did here. Okay, thank you, Arvind. And so now you're asked. Right, so um, we don't do this for all the reports, but for some key reports, um, there are certain groups that prefer the data to be formatted, the dates to be formatted one way, the, the fonts, etc. So what we do is we load an Excel template into the report definition in Workday. And uh, there are drawbacks to that, uh, but you know, uh, it, there, is, there are a few reports where we need to do it. Till about two years back, uh, everything worked fine, wherein we would, if you see the first screen, uh, we've pre-filtered the header row in the template, right? So there's a filter uh, enabled uh, on, on the second row of the file. Now, when we load the template into Workday, the report runs, and when the output came out, it was pre-filtered, so the end user didn't have to again go in and add the filter in. Now, uh, about two years back, we started facing an issue where uh, the filter would disappear and then move to the first row of the report where the report name is, right? And so we worked with Microsoft, we worked with Workday, and it kept bouncing back and forth, um, you know, try version A, version 1.3, version 1.4, but we didn't get a solution at all. So I just wanted to check if anyone else um, is using report templates, and if so, are you pre-filtering the row when you load it in, and are you facing the same issue as us? because we never could get to the bottom of it. You know, neither party sort of um, gave us a response. So that's my ask. All right, thank you, Arvind. Check the chat. Um, also, um, Mike, for questions on the boomerang, and I saw a thank you to you as well. So let's keep going. We've got two more guests. One, who do we have up next? Up next, we have Floyd from Tennessee with some brainstorms. Good morning. David had several times in the past when we were on this show, he talked to, uh, had wanted us to share a couple of brainstorms that we had particular interest in. What I thought about doing, and I, I talked to some people at the Workday Community Group and our internal people, was possibility of just exporting our brainstorm workbench, cutting out the uh, internal facing fields, and then doing a little bit of extra analytics on that to uh, make that a little bit easier to go through and then somebody could go through the whole list if they wanted to of what was currently in our group. I had to break that up into two groups because the export cuts off at a thousand rows. So I split it up into reporting and analytics and things that are outside of reporting analytics and posted that in the solution catalog. And then I added some extra analytics on there the, the detailed lists are sorted by the year of uh, the date that they were initially logged. So maybe the older stuff can be seen first. And then I took each one and did some statistics about what year it was logged and what its current status is. So in this particular case, we can see that for reporting analytics of the things that we voted on that were logged by us or other customers, uh, Workday has delivered 14.03% of that. And then on a the couple of other tabs, you can see some totals and percentages of the status by uh, the year the brainstorm ID was logged. And then on the detailed tab, we also added some analytics there. The order, like I said, is, is based on the, the date that the uh, ID, item was logged. So the oldest stuff is shown first, so maybe we can see what's been out there a little longer. Uh, and then we, <clears throat> I flagged all the stuff that doesn't have a JIRA. And then we also did some, some conditional formatting on uh, the net votes so we can see what has the highest votes. So for, for example, the, the first one on the list was the uh, Paul Gusps and added that way back in 2010 to add the ability to automatically email report output. And uh, it does have a JIRA, uh, but so far that hasn't happened. So I just thought that the, the hyperlink column also has a clickable hyperlink straight to that brainstorm idea in the Workday community. So I thought that would be an easier way to go through and review the list. And one of the things that I'm looking for myself is to find those things that are potentially small enough development efforts that have big payback across the customer base that Workday could 
could not wait for big projects to be done, but do those small polish things in the cracks between other things and help all of the customers and partners out there. Okay, thank you, Floyd. Up next, Laura with reporting release best practices. So it is release time. So these are some tips and tricks, things that most people don't think about when you're reviewing new releases. Generally, you think of, oh yes, I need to look at what's new reports and all of that. But these are some different things. Retired reports is one really big one. Each year, Workday is gonna retire a few reports. Sometimes it's more than others. We run a report of all the Workday uh, standard reports in production and sandbox preview, do a view look up, and then what's going away and retiring, we run a run history on, remember that's just six months, so we also do a view sec for sec to see who could have run the report. Maybe eight months ago, it was run 400 times and we just didn't know. Um, if we see potential that we may need this information, this particular report later, we copy the report if it's report writer, name it and share it the same, proxy and test, of course. And then we hide the workday delivered one so that users aren't seeing two and we can see if there's any impact before it's decommissioned. Um, when it's a field, do not use fields. Hopefully you have governance so that you don't make a new report every time someone says, hey, I, can you rearrange these fields and add one and take three away? Saying you do that, adding the alternate report field is a lot easier. And the same needs to be done, next slide, on calc fields. There is a report to find the do not use on reports. On calc fields, you'll need to build your own using the do, do not use field. This can take a lot more time because there's lots of calc fields. Newer day delivered reports we spend a lot more time on. We use the same VLOOKUP. We copy and review the report's designs, you know, just to see do we really need to have a new report or can we just put a little bit of functionality into something we already have. We do a view sec for sec. Now, I could spend forever talking about GDPR. It is a multiple slide experience talking to me about GDPR, but suffice it to say, workday security and report governance are two different things. Like data exposure, when you think about date of birth, social security numbers, home addresses, on a worker profile, little bitty, bitty. On a report, here's a big data set for that phishing email that comes in and says they need something to grab all your data. So because of that, we choose to limit reports that have these fields, okay? Sure. We do that with a, a concept of that an HR call center team member would not need to have you know, all of this in a report, but a benefits person would. So we have a field search report that lets us find fields displayed on the report. And then we just populate the prompt with, we type in date of birth and grab all the fields in between and run it. And then any reports that show, you'll see things like all dependents with same national ID and the fields displayed show date of birth. Then we look at, you know, here's the security groups who have access. You can do a view sec for sec if you want to see if there's more detail to it. But ultimately, you want to make sure that you really have a good understanding of, okay, benefits, well, that's all that needs to do it, so I don't need to hide this. But if it's the whole world can see this new report, we hide it. Also, trended worker, we use fiscal periods at NCR on trended worker which means every workday delivered report is going to return an error for your users. So I, I want to, to emphasize we love fiscal periods. It makes our company very happy, but we have to copy every single report and hide the other ones so people don't go get errors. Speaking of brainstorms like Floyd was, I have a brainstorm so that this wouldn't have to be done in the future. Please vote. <laughs> okay, so people, I, thanks for going quickly, Laura, you know, and the video will be available, right? So people can come back 36, 98, 65 for those who want to vote for that brainstorm right now. And the most important of your slides, perhaps? Yes, caution. <laughs> if you hide things, which we're doing, 
You want to make sure you have payroll run a cycle. You do all kinds of functionality because sometimes a report actually is tied to workday functionality. Mm -hmm. So we've hit in a report before and suddenly payroll couldn't process. So caution. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the other thing we do at the same time is we just go ahead and extend our scheduled report instances. We do an audit of the recipients and confirm that any workday delivered reports that are being DNU'd have an alternate report scheduled. Just kind of a good time to do stuff like that. All right, Laura, um, thank you so much. Um, one question for you. The materials you just went through, are some of it or most of it on community or um, not yet? Not yet, but I can post it. Okay, all right, that sounds great. Thanks, Laura. Let's see who will make the podium this week. So All right. again, if you haven't already, go ahead and log and click a hoot.it in your browser. And our pen is 4463333. And this one is the quiz Kahoot. There are correct answers. Uh, Denise, did you get three questions in or only two? I put three questions in, so hopefully they all push to the URL. Okay, for those who are brand new, you might need to refresh your screen. Denise, I think I'm going to read these off. How many episodes of The Sharing Show have there been so far? 14 or more is red, blue is 12 or 13, yellow 8 to 11, and green is 4 to 7. The correct answer was, okay, most people got it. There's actually, this is episode 15. Had to put 14 or more because didn't know people would know to include this one. Okay, Nathan is ahead by 13 points over Anthony. Several other people here, all within 31 points of each other. What month is November officially? For me, it's every month. Red is January, blue is July, yellow is August, green is November. We're up to 47 answers. Almost everyone got this one right. It's Movember, it's spelled M-O, the word mustache in Australia where it started. So you're wearing a Mo, so it's November. Change one letter, it's Movember. Let's see who is close to the top here. Um, sorry, don't know how to say it. Kyrie or Kyre. I, anyway, Nathan, Gretsch, Lisa V and Edward, all in between under 100 points from each other. What kind of chocolate was thrown into the crowd at the European Rising in 2018? Hershey's, Godiva, Ghirardelli, or hot chocolate was thrown into the crowd? Yes, it was Godiva. Andre was a guest showing us, um, telling us a story about it. Let's see. Okay, so um, Kyrie, um, you're the winner. Nathan, you're close behind. And then Lisa V, congrats to all those who made the podium. Great show. Thank you, David, Denise, Logan, and special thank you to our guests for speaking today and sharing all their knowledge with us. So as always, as David mentioned, we publish each episode on our YouTube channel. Head over there, subscribe and, and sign up for the notifications and you'll get notified when we, we push it out. Um, now that's all that's left to say is uh, over to the open mic. We're going to just end the show and then come back for the open mic. So uh, everybody have a great work day.